Hello and welcome to episode, uh, what are we, episode 7 this time, aren't we? Yes. Yes, eh? This is episode. the we forgot to clear our throat episode before we, you know, before That's we right. start. That's right. Episode life. 7, Lab Rats, thank you for uh, downloading us. Uh, this week we're going, this is sort of part 2 of an episode we did, was it last week or the week before? Last week. Last week we did, yeah. Um, and we're going to show you, we showed you how to set up a home network and now the most exciting part of the home network is uh, how to connect wirelessly. So you can go out and languish on the back deck, by the pool and that sort of thing without any wires. Because I hate wires! I hate them too. I hate wires so Let's much that... Hey, wait a second. <laughs> I was using that. Sorry, Sean. Okay. I, I just have so many wires around here. Oh, well, we have more incentive now to do this wirelessly. So, <laughs> oh, wait a second before, so. before we continue. Um, I wanted to, uh, as usual, plug my book, the Absolute Beginner's Guide yes. to. Hey! <laughs> no, don't, don't. Gosh. Oops, I'm to bloop that one. Nice. Thank you, Sean. All right. Well, we're gonna have to give this one away then. Um, what happened to the other piece? Look what, he, look what he did. Look at this. All right. So it's time for a contest. The, uh, we're always looking for uh, opportunities to, uh, for new ideas for the show. So uh, the person who uh, sent us the best idea <laughs> to feedback at labraz.tv wins this slightly damaged, slightly used book. Uh, but we promise all to, uh, to sign it as well. Tip. The idea should not be more promotion of Cyber's book. <laughs> Actually, it could be. Here. Hey, hey, Matt, give me the piece of the thingy there. We'll, we'll tape it up so it's not damaged, completely damaged. Thanks, buddy. Hang on. All right, so when do you start the episode while I uh, fix my book? All right, so we want to go wirelessly. Shameless hugster. Uh, we want to go wireless here. So we've got uh, our wireless, or we've got the wireless router already in place here. Um, well done. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, yes, wirelessly. Wire let's go wirelessly. So we have to assume that we Thanks, have man. a uh, we have a network uh, router built in already, right? We're already connected right. to obviously, using wires. Obviously not through this cable here, but so we've got one in place here. So um, when you first connect your first wireless connection, you'll probably want to do this using a wired connection to start with. Yeah, always. You, you, well, not always. You can actually do it without the without the wire. You can actually do it wirelessly, but it's not recommended because you'll you can lose the connection halfway through, and then you're really scumped. That's right. So, let's uh, set it up using the wire. Okay. So, you got the wire. Let's. Uh, well, let's so, start so, it so let's talk about the hardware first, because of course, if we have no wires, we have an antenna. Your your router has to be wire wireless, so it has an antenna on one end. Yes. And the idea is you're sending radio waves between this antenna and the computer that's talking to it. So you need an antenna on the computer. Most uh, notebooks these days, if it's uh, within the last couple of years, will have wireless built in. That's right. So there's uh, a couple things you can look for. I'm not sure whether, yeah, you've got one on here. It says uh, Centrino on here. We'll uh, show you a close up of that logo. Uh, that means you have wireless built in. That's right. It's an, it's an Intel chipset basically that says, let's pair the uh, Pentium M uh, processor with a wireless chipset that will allow for wireless capabilities as well as battery optimization and a bunch of other chips on the machine. Mm -hmm. They call that Centrino. But if you have that Centrino logo on your laptop, it means that you have wireless capability already. Yeah, it may say Wi-Fi or it may say 802.11b or 802.11g. All of these will mean you have wireless on board. Right. 11a will as well, but you know it's it's older. It's uh, sort of more specialized. So let's not worry about that too much. Should we should we talk a bit about the 802.11 nonsense? Because I think that's probably people get really confused by that a lot. Yeah. Recently we talked about uh, IEEE 1394, right. which is the uh, remember the song IEEE 1394. Oh, don't okay. make me cut the other cover of your book. <laughs> um, <laughs> IEEE stands for the Institute of Electrical Engin and Electronics yeah. Engineers. Yes. And they're a body that sets a bunch of specifications for electronics and electrical stuff. Yes, they do. And 802.11 is one of their specifications right. for networking. Right. And dot .11 is for the wireless. Right. Okay, so when you have B, that's one flavor of wireless networking. One type. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. one type. 11G will be another. 11A will be yet another. Right, exactly. There's 11N will be coming, and I think 11I. Mm, I is a diff slightly different. It's not a, it's a, yeah, there's, there's, a, really matter. there's a lot of different flavors. But the, the two that you're really going to want to worry about right uh, now are 11B and 11G. That's right. So, um, 802.11B was the first wireless specification to come out from, from these guys. 
Uh, essentially what it did was it allowed 11 megabits per second worth of wireless connectivity, potentially, through, your, through the air. Yeah, the further away you go from the, the transmitter, the slower it will get. That's but a yeah, range of about, what, 300 feet or so about from 300 the transmitter, feet. theoretically. When you get the furthest away you can and still get a signal, you get about one megabit per second. That's right, exactly. It actually steps down from, from 11 down to 7 to 5, I think, to, no, it goes all the way down. It doesn't really matter because today, if you're going to go out and buy yourself a wireless network, a wireless network router, a wireless network card, or a computer, it's probably going to be 802.11G. Yes. And that is the newest, or the actually, you know, it's, the most, it's the most popular uh, wireless networking specification right now. And that gives you uh, wireless throughput bandwidth of about uh, 54. 54 megabits per second. Right, and there, there's tricks that some of the manufacturers can use, uh, doubling the channels up and all that to get you more. Sometimes I think about twice, maybe 100, yeah, 108. Yeah, sometimes they'll so. say uh, extreme edition exactly. of 108, because basically they're right. using the doubling up on, on the capability. The right proper there. specification is 54. Right. per second. Exactly. Now, you may come across 802.11a. We'll mention that real quick. It's, that hassle has 54 megabits per second, but it uses a slightly different piece of the radio spectrum. It uh, uses the 5 gigahertz range, okay. uh, whereas B and G use the 2.4 gigahertz range. And you may know that radio bit because baby monitors use it, garage door openers use it, your cordless phone uses it. I think I've got one here somewhere. Yeah, it's in the, all over the place. uses 2.4 gigahertz, that part of the radio band, as, as does Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, so you're going to want to, so, you, so if your router is 802.11g, you're going to want a wireless adapter or a, a computer that's capable of 802.11g as well. Well, you can use 802.11b on either end of the equation, but they'll both step down to the slower speed right. then. So if you had a, an older laptop, for example, that was 802.11b, it will work with your 802.11g wireless uh, router. At 11 megabits per second, the maximum. Megabit, maximum, exactly. Okay. So if you don't have it built into your notebook, you can buy a PC card. Mm -hmm. Uh, that will slot into, into the, the side PC, of your notebook, yeah, into the, into the side right and here. that will add it. You'll have to add a driver to your notebook, and, and then you'll be able to connect just like you would with a notebook that you have right now. Right, so don't fret. If you have a Pentium 3 or a Pentium 2 laptop and you still want to get some usage out of it, you can actually slot one of these babies in, and it will work just fine. Um, and you can do that with your PC, too. You can. In your PC, uh, this is here is a D-Link um, external wireless adapter. It's actually... Uh, USB, you could actually just plug it directly into a USB port, or you can use this extender here and make it sort of a wireless antenna so like that. So you can that. use that either with your notebook or your PC? That's right, exactly. And you can actually get uh, what they call PCI cards, which are like cards that go in the back of the computer uh, and they have an antenna on it as well. That works for your desktop as well. So all the hardware is in place. Now what do we do, Sean? Well, we need to configure it. So you've got the wireless c connectivity, but you need to be able to get your router, which is still over there, mm -hmm. to talk to your notebook. Now, right at the moment, uh, without any configuration, they're both transmitting, but they don't know what to say to each other because they don't have the proper settings. That's right. So we're going to uh, get those settings in place. Now, there's uh, one thing that you have to know first, and that is the name of the network. Right. And so that's SSID. SSID. Inside your router, you can actually set the name uh, of your router to anything you like. I think uh, it comes you know, pre-configured with uh, the I think default on uh, some devices and Linksys, I think it's called Linksys. Yes. But when you set up your router, initially you're going to be actually assigning an SSID. Uh, it'll actually ask you what you want to set it now, up as. You don't have to, but you want to, and here's to. why. Because if someone is driving past your house, sees your router, sees Linksys on there, they'll know exactly how to get into that probably, right. because if you haven't bothered to change the SSID name on that, you probably haven't changed the password. Right. You haven't changed any of the other security settings. So if they tune in and they, and they go, oh, look, it says Linksys. That's basically they're going, jump. I know exactly that that person knows nothing about their wireless network, and I can get into that really easily. Right. So you want to change it to something that uh, you'll be able to identify as your own. And you don't want to necessarily, we've talked about this before, you don't want to say your address on that, because then people will know exactly where your wireless yeah. network is. Right. And they'll know you have notebook computers there. Yeah. You don't want that. You want to say 123 Main Street, if that's your address. <laughs> Not really recommended. If you really want to, put your neighbor's address in there. <laughs> That's right. All right. Or, or your, your ex-wife's phone number. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So, uh, okay. So yeah. So let's now. How do you tune it in? Should how we talk you about tune that? In? Yeah. Sure. 
Um, with uh, the PC, if you've got a wireless built in, you'll have a little client, and that's built into the system tray typically. You can see it way, way down here, right in the corner. It's so tiny, but tiny, uh, tiny, tiny. generally it looks very similar to the uh, icon you'll see for your uh, general networking. So if you're wired, it'll be roughly the same in, in a lot of cases. Sometimes it'll have a few little things off to little, the side. Little wireless, yeah, little you know. squiggles to indicate that it's sending stuff. Right. Okay, so what you're going to do is going to uh, double click on that. And uh, you, you're going to get a box. Uh, right now, I'm already connected, but I'm going to choose to say View Wireless Networks. And as you can see, all the wireless networks in my neighborhood have just come up on my computer screen. And I quite like this one here. Bubbly poo. Bubbly poo. That's probably the, uh, the two ladies downstairs. I don't know for sure, but anyway. Uh, it's, uh, so yeah, you too could call it bubbly poo, yeah, as long as you're not living in my neighborhood. Yeah, look down below that though, link says, we have someone in this neighborhood that uh, is left at default. We could hack this probably yeah. better, but you know what? We're not going to do that. We should do that one day though. Yeah, we'll try. Just for fun. Um, so we're gonna actually going to tune into my, uh, my router here. I called it Cyberwalker. Surprise. Surprise. Uh, but I should probably call it actually the absolute beginner's guide to security spam and spyware and viruses. <laughs> Enough of the bubbly poo. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Sean. Uh, no, we call it Cyberwalker. So essentially what you want to do is, is Click onto that and um, you, and actually when you do that, you're going to have a connect button here. This actually says disconnect. I'll disconnect just for demonstration purposes and I will reconnect uh, when it comes back. What happens is on a fairly regular basis, this will go out and check to see if there are any new ones that, uh, that have popped up. Um, but you just want to choose the one that is yours and say connect. And while, uh, Windows will sniff it out and then Connect your, and then you're, you're, you're there, aren't you? You are there. With ex one exception. Uh, unless your network is secured with encryption. Right. Now, we showed that off in episode one. So rather than go into that again, just go download episode one if you want to find out how to set up your encryption. Yeah, wireless on encryption on either web or uh, WPA. Yes. Now, on the Mac, is there, is there a different uh, experience altogether? Um, well, you're sort of uh, flipping things upside down, as the Mac often does. Instead of going to the bottom, you'll be going to the top. And there's a little wireless uh, symbol up top, a little series of uh, semicircles. You'll click on that, click on it once, and uh, again, you'll have a drop-down menu in this case that lists all your wireless networks. So we actually have two cyber walkers right now on this one for some reason. I think we're probably picking up your notebook as well. But uh, we have the same connections otherwise. We have Bubbly Poo, CyberWalker, CyberWalker Robinson Night, Yari and Yami, and other if something is hidden, if you've hidden your SSID for some reason, which you can do for security purposes. It's not very effective against hackers, but you can do that as well you would enter that in manually there under other. So again, we're going to connect to CyberWalker there. It will just basically connect. There's, there's not as much, uh, uh, I think we just lost our connection with uh, Biff jumping on the keyboard, but uh, it's, it's up. So what we're going to do now is we are going to, now we're going to just you're search try to, to browse. Yeah. So you're once you're to... connected, you're just, you're just fine. All you've got to do is open your web browser, open your email, and you're off to the races. Yeah, and so uh, there we are. I mean, when I came here today, uh, I haven't set this up before. I just automatically connected to Andy's network, and away we go. Right. Now, Andy's network is currently open as we're doing this right. demonstration, just for uh, ease of use right. for as this demo. And I actually, you know what? Uh, I actually do leave my network open sometimes. I probably shouldn't tell everybody that, but I do. Partly because... Uh, I lock down my computers, and uh, you have to use a password to get into any of the uh, shared folders. But, uh, but generally, um, you do want to wirelessly encrypt your network so nobody can steal your bandwidth, download huge amounts of porn, and get yourself in trouble with your ISP. Well, I guess that's it for uh, episode uh, number seven. Thank you for cutting up my book. Not a problem. <laughs> Anytime. Don't forget that uh, we do have a contest. It is a, uh, this is a real thing. Uh, send us an email to feedback at labratstv.com. Give us an idea of what you'd like to see on the show, what we'd like us to demonstrate, and uh, we will um, we'll send you this book, and it'll be autographed by Sean, by me, and Matt behind the camera, and Gio over here on uh, camera D. Maybe we can get Biff and Boo to contribute somehow as well. <laughs> Little paw prints or something like that. Anyway, thanks for downloading, and we'll see you next time. Are you ready?
just basically connect. There's there's not as much. Uh, uh, I think we just lost our connection with uh, <laughs> jumping on the keyboard, but uh, it's it's up. So. What do you